The discourse surrounding the current geopolitical landscape, particularly in the context of U.S. foreign policy and its implications for domestic political dynamics, is complex and fraught with tension. In a recent interview, former U.S. Director of National Intelligence John Ratcliffe articulated his concerns regarding the Biden administration's approach to both international threats and domestic political maneuvering, especially as the presidential election approaches. Ratcliffe's analysis begins with the recent military actions taken by Israel against Hezbollah and Hamas. He emphasizes that these actions have significantly weakened these terrorist organizations, which have posed ongoing threats not only to Israel, but also to broader regional stability. By eliminating key leadership figures within Hezbollah, Israel has effectively disrupted their operational capabilities. Ratcliffe argues that this achievement is not just a victory for Israel, but also serves to enhance U.S. national security interests. The implication here is that a stronger Israel translates to a more stable Middle East, which is crucial for American strategic interests. However, Ratcliffe expresses frustration over the Biden administration's response to these developments. He critiques their calls for a ceasefire and diplomatic solutions, framing them as misguided and potentially harmful. He posits that a ceasefire would enable groups like Hamas and Hezbollah to regroup and rearm, thus exacerbating the threats they pose. This perspective suggests a belief that the Biden administration's policies are not just ineffective, but could actively undermine the progress achieved through Israel's military successes. Delving deeper, Ratcliffe suggests that the administration's stance is not merely an error in judgment, but is rooted in political expediency. He claims that the Democratic Party, particularly as they prepare for the upcoming election, is prioritizing political gains over national security considerations. The notion here is that the Democrats are seeking a ceasefire to bolster Kamala Harris's political prospects, indicating a willingness to compromise on security matters for electoral advantage. Ratcliffe's characterization of the Democrats as being willing to overlook acts of aggression by adversaries like Iran highlights a deep concern over the integrity of U.S. foreign policy. In his analysis, Ratcliffe connects domestic and international policies, particularly regarding Iran's actions. He argues that the Biden administration's failure to respond robustly to Iranian aggression is indicative of a broader pattern of prioritizing political goals over effective governance. He points to instances where Iran has allegedly engaged in election interference, suggesting that their interests align with those of the Democratic Party, namely, stopping Donald Trump at any cost. This claim underscores the idea that foreign adversaries could exploit domestic political divisions, further complicating U.S. efforts to project strength and stability on the world stage. Sentiment analysis of Ratcliffe's statements reveals a pervasive sense of urgency and alarm regarding the current state of U.S. foreign policy. His rhetoric suggests a growing frustration with what he sees as a lack of resolve and clarity in addressing both external threats and internal political dynamics. The framing of the conversation implies a belief that the current administration's strategies reflect a troubling trend of allowing political calculations to dictate national security decisions. This sentiment resonates with constituents who prioritize a strong, unwavering approach to international relations, especially concerning adversaries like Iran and terrorist organizations. Ratcliffe's concerns extend to domestic security, particularly regarding the current immigration crisis at the southern U.S. border. He argues that the Biden administration's lax border policies have allowed millions of undocumented individuals to enter the country, which he believes has resulted in increased crime and safety risks for American citizens. By linking this issue to Kamala Harris, who has been designated as the border czar, he emphasizes accountability and frames her actions, or lack thereof, as detrimental to public safety. This narrative positions Harris as responsible for a significant rise in crime, further politicizing the immigration debate. The potential consequences of the strategies employed by the Democratic leadership, as articulated by Ratcliffe, could have profound implications for both national security and domestic governance. If the administration continues to exhibit a reluctance to confront threats from entities like Iran, Hezbollah, and Hamas, this could embolden these groups, leading to increased instability not only in the Middle East, but also potentially threatening U.S. interests. The risk of a security vacuum emerging from perceived U.S. weakness may invite further aggression from adversaries and exacerbate existing tensions. Moreover, the discussion touches on the broader implications for domestic politics. The characterization of national security issues as politically motivated maneuvers could lead to further polarization within the electorate. If citizens perceive that their leaders are prioritizing party allegiance over national interests, it could undermine public trust in governmental institutions and exacerbate partisan divisions. This sentiment could influence voter behavior in upcoming elections, particularly among constituents who prioritize strong national security policies. Furthermore, Ratcliffe's assertions raise critical ethical questions regarding the actions of government officials and the extent to which political considerations can influence policy decisions. If the Biden administration's approach is perceived as election interference, this could undermine the legitimacy of governmental institutions and, in conclusion, the discourse surrounding U.S. foreign policy, particularly regarding Iran, Israel, and domestic political maneuvers, reveals significant implications for national security and electoral dynamics. The insights provided by John Ratcliffe emphasize a troubling intersection where political expediency may compromise the integrity of national security strategies. His analysis suggests that the Democratic Party's approach, 
particularly as the presidential election nears, reflects a willingness to prioritize electoral gains over the safety and security of a nation. This raises critical questions about the responsibilities of government leaders in safeguarding American interests amid complex geopolitical realities. One of the primary takeaways from Ratcliffe's commentary is the perceived failure of the Biden administration to adequately respond to external threats. By calling for a ceasefire in the face of ongoing aggression from groups like Hamas and Hezbollah, the administration may inadvertently allow these organizations to regroup and rearm. This could potentially lead to a more volatile security environment, undermining the achievements made by Israel in neutralizing key terrorist leaders. The strategic implications of this stance are significant. A weakened U.S. posture in the Middle East could embolden adversaries and create a ripple effect that destabilizes the region further. Moreover, Ratcliffe's assertion that the Biden administration's policies align with the goals of Iran speaks to a broader concern regarding the alignment of foreign policy with domestic political strategy. If decisions regarding national security are influenced by the desire to secure electoral advantages, this could have far-reaching consequences for U.S. standing in the world. Adversaries may perceive this as a sign of weakness, potentially encouraging further acts of aggression. The failure to respond decisively to Iranian provocations could embolden not only Iran, but also other regional players who might view the U.S. as less committed to its allies and interests. From a domestic perspective, the implications of these policies are equally concerning. Rackless focus on immigration issues highlights a significant challenge for the Biden administration. The assertion that lax border policies have led to increased crime creates a narrative that could resonate with voters who prioritize safety and security. If the public perceives that their leaders are not effectively managing border security, this could lead to a loss of trust in government institutions and heightened partisan divisions. Such dynamics may influence electoral outcomes, particularly in pivotal swing states where public sentiment on immigration and crime can sway votes. Furthermore, the discussion around national security as a political tool underscores the ethical dilemmas faced by government officials. If actions taken by leaders appear to be politically motivated, particularly in the context of electoral cycles, it could undermine public confidence in the integrity of the political system. Voters may become disillusioned, perceiving their leaders as prioritizing political maneuvering over the common good. This erosion of trust could have long-lasting effects, shaping how citizens engage with the political process and their expectations of governance. The sentiment analysis surrounding Ratcliffe's assertions reveals a growing anxiety among constituents regarding the state of national security. Many individuals express concern that political considerations are overshadowing critical security issues, leading to a potential crisis of confidence in government. The framing of these issues in the context of an impending election heightens the urgency of the discussion as voters grapple with the implications of policies that may prioritize party loyalty over national safety. Additionally, Ratcliffe's narrative positions Kamala Harris and the Biden administration's border policies as central to the ongoing immigration crisis. By attributing responsibility for rising crime rates to Harris, he creates a powerful political narrative that could resonate with constituents concerned about public safety. This tactic not only seeks to hold individual leaders accountable, but also serves to frame the broader democratic agenda as detrimental to American security. Such messaging could mobilize voters who feel vulnerable in light of rising crime and immigration concerns, potentially influencing their electoral choices. The broader consequences of the Democratic Party's approach to national security and immigration could reshape the political landscape in the United States. As the public becomes increasingly aware of the interconnectedness of these issues, it may lead to a more engaged electorate that demands accountability from their leaders. This could manifest in increased scrutiny of government actions and a call for policies that prioritize national security over political expediency. Ultimately, the implications of the current political landscape are profound. The ongoing dialogue about national security and its intersection with domestic politics highlights the need for leaders to adopt a principled approach that prioritizes the safety and security of the nation above all else. As voters reflect on these issues, the demand for transparency and accountability will likely grow, shaping the future of U.S. governance. In summary, the intersection of U.S. foreign policy, domestic security concerns, and political maneuvering presents a complex landscape that requires careful navigation. The stakes are high, as the decisions made in this context could have lasting implications for both national security and the integrity of the political system. The need for a coherent strategy that prioritizes the nation's safety over political considerations is more pressing than ever. As we move closer to the elections, the public will be watching closely, and their sentiments will undoubtedly shape the political discourse and influence the actions of leaders in the coming years. 